Welcome back. As I've said before, modern technology, both in the area of capturing images and also post-processing, gives us many more options to achieve great images. And particularly when we're shooting at the edge of the envelope. In this video, we're going to look at one of those situations, and it's in particular focused on the ability within Lightroom to create HDR panoramas. In my recent video, Sunset on the Cotswold Edge, I found myself up on the um, edge of the Cotswolds above the Severn Valley at sunset. It was a beautiful sunset, but I only had my 2470 and my 7200 lenses with me. But I wanted to capture the enormity and the beauty of that massive vista across the valley at sunset. The challenge I had was that it was a high contrast um, setting, both vertically from the valley up to the setting sun, because I was shooting into the sun, but then also when I wanted to create this panorama, it was drop the light was dropping off from where the sun was setting, it dropped off as I moved either side of it. It was a high contrast setting on two dimensions. On the vertical dimension, the valley floor was quite dark and I was shooting into the sun, so the sun was obviously quite bright higher up in the sky. But equally on the horizontal axis, where when I was shooting towards the sun, it was very bright, but as you shot away from the sun, the light levels dropped off very rapidly. Traditionally, we'd have probably used graduated filters to address the issue of the brighter sky and the darker valley. And then possibly on the horizontal axis, we'd have bracketed to allow us to blend and stitch those images together in quite a manual way, which would have required significant post-processing skills. Up until the October 2018 release of Lightroom Classic, and it's important to differentiate between Lightroom Classic and Lightroom CC for these purposes, we had the capability to do HDR photo merges in Lightroom, and we also had the ability to stitch together automatically to create panoramas. In the October 2018 release, it also gave us the opportunity and the capability to create HDR panoramas, which was a major step forward. And it's this capability that we're going to focus in on in this video, because when I was up there on the Cotswold Edge, with that high contrast setting, the beautiful sunset, and a wide panorama that I wanted to capture, it was this functionality that I had in mind when I knew I could capture a series of bracketed images, bring them together in Lightroom, using HDR and as a panorama, to create what I thought might be a really good image. So let's start with the capture of the images. I was obviously up on the Cotswold Edge, I could see this beautiful opportunity for an image. And what I did was, or what I do quite often is if I know I'm going to be shooting a series of bracketed images, I'll take a photo of my hand in front of the lens, just so as I've got a marker in my images to remind me that the next set of images are going to be bracketed or a panorama. Once I've done this, I set the camera to shoot um, bracketed images, three images, plus one stop and minus one stop either side of where the metering said. And I'll put a link above which uh, to a video where I um, show you how to do this in the Nikon Z series cameras. And then what I did was I chose to shoot three sets of three bracketed images, slightly overlapping so that they would come together well in the panorama capabilities of Lightroom. I did this handheld. Now, this is where technology can help us because perhaps in the past where we had to manually stitch the images together, we'd probably use a tripod to get that accuracy in the images so they were easier to stitch together. Lightroom is actually quite powerful and it allows for minor differences between the um, sets of images and therefore you can take um, a series of handheld images. I did it on high shutter release so there was very little time in between the images but Lightroom will now address that and can cope with that. And it's just another example of how software has moved forward over the past few years to really help us in some of these areas to unlock new capabilities with our cameras. So very quickly, very simply, I had my nine images. Three sets of three images bracketed, plus one stop, minus one stop around where it was metered, and I knew I'd overlap them so that they would come together well in Lightroom in that panorama 
um, capability that it has. Okay, so let's look at the images. Um, I've imported the nine images plus um, my hand in front of the camera, which denoted the start of the sequence of images. So that's the 10th image um, and just tells me that these nine were the three groups of three bracketed images. What we can see here is the first one in each set is the zero point, is where the camera metered the scene. So the very high um, light levels in, or the bright sky and the dark um, ground. The next one is minus one stop in this case, and the next one is plus one stop. And then that's the same for each of the three sets of images. So I've got the left hand image, I've got the center image, and the right hand image um, sets in this case. I just shot three. Sometimes I'll shoot vertical and shoot five um, sets of images. Obviously you've got to be careful because the size of the output image gets bigger and bigger, especially with a 47 megapixel, um, 45 megapixel camera. Um, you know, the size of those images can get quite big and therefore processing can be quite a challenge um, on some machines. In this case, I shot landscape and I've got three sets of bracketed images. I shot in RAW um, and the reason I do this is because what I like to do is go in and have a look at the image. I think the white balance looks reasonably okay in these cases, but what I could do is I could go in and make some changes to this first image and then come out, select all of the images and then hit sync settings, choose the settings that I have changed and that will then replicate that across all of the um, sequence of images because what you don't want to do is adjust the white balance in, in one image and leave the rest the same because they're all bracketed so you want to keep that differential from the different bracketed images um, consistent. In this case I didn't feel the need to do that so what we have to do now is we select our nine images from the sequence, the three sets of three bracketed images. They are in a continuous sequence and that's really important for this to work within Lightroom. You have to have a consistent set of bracketing. They have to be um, consistently bracketed. In this case, I shot them very quickly, so it wasn't an issue. Um, I didn't change the bracketing settings in between each image. And they have to be in sequence. So even if it's renumbered them like I've done here, it's kept them in the right sequential order. So we go up to Photo and down to Photo Merge. And here we've got the options for HDR, Panorama, and then as of the 2018 October 2018 update, we've got HDR panorama. So let's click on that. And the computer will have a think about it. It will try and stitch them together. Here you will get an error if it can't stitch them together. So in this case, it has stitched them together. And let's look at the different options we've got here. So we've got different projections. And what this means is this is how the computer is bringing the images together. So spherical, we have to imagine the computer is putting them on the inside of a sphere or ball. Um, and this can be quite good for really wide or multi-row panoramas or HDR panoramas. So we'll come back to that and we'll look at that. We can see that the way the computer has calculated is is left some area around. So we'll have to either choose to crop that off or we can use boundary warp on that. The second option is cylindrical, and this is where the computer puts the images as if they're on the inside of a cylinder. And then perspective, um, and you know, cylinder, before we move on, cylinder um, works really, wide, really well with wide panoramas, but it also keeps vertical lines vertical. So it can be quite good if you've got some architecture in there or some vertical um, lines. And that's where it can be better than spherical. Perspective, now this doesn't always work. Um, and this is really trying to map the images onto a flat surface. And it keeps straight lines straight. So again, it's good for architectural. In this case, it wasn't possible for the computer to work out how it could do that. Um, and it quite often I found it does that. So I tend to stick to either cylindrical or spherical. Um, I think I'm going to go spherical on this. Um, and we can see that actually we're going to potentially lose um, some of the areas around it. Now we can deal with that in two ways. We can choose auto crop 
and Lightroom will crop off those white areas to a constrained crop in the middle, which will give us something, an image that is quite wide, um, very letterbox-like, and it may suit this image because it's quite realistic. Or we can take that off and we can use boundary warp. And if you pull boundary warp across to the edge, what you'll see is the computer is stretching the image out to fill those white areas. And what you'll find is sometimes this will accentuate the vertical and create quite a, um, an over accentuated um, image. Um, but that may be right in some situations. I think in this case, I want, for me, it was quite a wide panorama I'm after. So I'm going to leave it um, wide and then use auto crop. The next setting down, auto settings, is if you imagine you create your panorama and this is the image as it would be if I um, exported it without any auto settings on it. So I could export it like this, it's quite a dull image. And then I could go into the develop module and hit the auto button in the basic settings area. And it would give me a first cut on what the algorithms that Adobe have created thinks is the optimum set of settings. We can save some time in that we can try um, we can move that auto settings, hit the auto button into this process. And I'm going to do that um, this time just to show you what comes out. We can see it's lifted some of the colors. We've got a nice orange um, sunset there. We've got perhaps the, um, the gold now look on the, the shadows on the hill. So I think I'm going to run with that this time. And then create stack is the final option. And if we wanted to create a group in our library in Lightroom of all the nine images, so we knew that these were the nine images that we had brought together in this panorama, this HDR panorama, we could tick that box. I've already gone through my library and I've grouped together the individual bracketed shots into groups of three. So I'm not going to do that on this occasion. So I'm happy with my settings. I've gone spherical, um, no boundary warp, used auto crop, and I've selected auto settings. So if we hit merge, the computer will start to merge those. We'll see it working away there. Now, there are some limitations um, in respect to using HDR panorama. Um, your bracketed shots, I'm sorry if you can hear the computer spooling up. It, this does take some processing power, so perhaps don't try it on a laptop or a basic computer. Um, but there are some limitations you have to think of. As I said, these have to be a continuous um, sequence of shots in the right order, so make sure if you've renamed them they are still in the right order. The bracketing of the individual images or the shots has to be consistent. So if you're shoot bracketing with three images, they all have to have three images. If it's plus one, minus one, they've all got to be that, um, that same bracketing style. Consistency is important. So the computer has now, um, or Lightroom Classic has now completed its processing. So let's look at the image. Um, so here we have it. It's looking pretty good. Um, you can't really see too much of a join. There is a very slight um, area of exposure. Um, you can see if you know what you're looking for. The horizon is reasonably level. As I said, the golden hour look in the shadows on the um, grass in the foreground looks really good. So I think it's done a pretty good job. And we could stop here, um, or we could perhaps go into the develop module and take the image further forward. I'm not going to do that live with you here today. So hopefully what this is showing is the advances in software, in post-processing software, and how this can unlock new capabilities for us as photographers, as image makers, using the gear we've got, but then blending it with the opportunities in post-processing to create a much bigger suite of images um, as we go forward. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. It's perhaps inspired you to go out and perhaps try some of this functionality. If you've already used it, leave us a comment below as to how you found it. Don't forget, hit subscribe, hit the notification bell, and you'll be notified of future videos. It's been great having you on this video, and I hope to see you in future videos.